Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, June 25th, 2024, about 11.36 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe. Uh, shows a 2.5 there in Hawaii, also a 1.0 here across the west coast of uh, Northern California. Starting off here with Kilauea Volcano. Uh, checking the latest update that was put out yesterday here. The volcano is currently not erupting. Still seeing some earthquake activity out here along the upper east rift zone. Uh, increases in seismicity and or deformation could result in new eruptive episodes within or near the summit area. So uh, just continuing to keep an eye on this very closely. The current updated deformation data here does show that we're uh, coming back up after uh, oh, a little bit of downturn last night in terms of deflation, but not a huge amount. That's very minimal compared to what we've been witnessing out here uh, over the past few months and actually literally the past couple years here since about 2018 we're at our highest level observed across the uh, summit area and the east rift zone upper east rift zone than uh, any time since 2018 so we're continuing to go up and up and up here is the uh, again the last week showing uh, the inflation continues here so we'll keep an eye on that as always uh, California looks like that one pointer is up here in the typical zone around these hydrothermal plants up here there's quite a few of them there across the clear lake volcanic field utilizing the heated areas below to create energy and there's a whole process involved in that including some earthquakes as uh, far as mount Lassen goes up here there's a uh, uh, these two earthquakes here actually it looks like they did add three here uh, from yesterday really nothing new to report here for now let's um i want to double check that the actual graph here for ourselves make sure that uh, everything's being reported transparency is key right amongst the government and uh, officials out there official data so I think uh, this one right here was working there's the data there's the earthquake there from uh, let's see here that's gonna be the biggest one right and that was only a point 1.7 there's a smaller one and yeah aside from that it looks fairly quiet up there in terms of any uh, other earthquake activity so just a, a handful of small earthquakes there yesterday really nothing of concern unless that turns into some type of major swarm then uh, we'll just kind of see uh, keep an eye on it here periodically uh, Mount St. Helens nothing showing up here a couple query blasts across the area of the Cascades Cascadia subduction zone nothing showing up here for now didn't get a chance to do a late night update last night. Uh, kind of got in late. But as uh, far as tremor activity goes from yesterday, still at 390 epicenters, still elevated out here across the Cascadia subduction zone. And of course, over the last month is when we've been watching uh, a large amount of tremor take place out here across the entire length of the Cascadia. Mostly, though, down here across the southern end of the Northern California and the extreme southwestern Oregon region there. That's the southern end of the Cascadia. And a lot of times we'll see a partial rupture uh, take place instead of a full rupture out here across the Cascadia, leading to an 8.1 to about an 8.4 uh, with a partial rupture. Of course, a large full-scale rupture of the Cascadia would result in a 9.0 or greater quake out here. And, of course, 324 years has passed. Trimmer continues to be elevated. We'll keep an eye on that to uh, see... How today's uh, trimmer goes later tonight in the update. They don't put out the uh, results of the trimmer counts until about 7 or 8 o'clock here local time. All right, across the uh, rest of California here, a handful of smaller quakes across the Bay region. Further down south, I know we've been, been kind of watching a little swarming going on here across the Southern California area. A couple more earthquakes here today in the one range. Looks like this has calmed down slightly here. Of course, this area did see a four-pointer yesterday. Uh, a look at the 2.5 map and above does show those earthquakes from yesterday. 4.1, 2.5, and a 3.4 uh, in the mix of these quakes here. Of course, many other aftershocks in that region as well. Uh, but overall, it looks like for now, seismic activity taking a little pause out here across the state of California. A uh, handful of smaller quakes up and down the area, but really no areas of interest um there's a little bit down here off the brawley seismic zone from yesterday but really not seeing anything stir back up here uh we will keep an eye on it though because we are still seeing some movement down here in the um well just south here of the gulf of mexico 
see if the U.S. Uh, yeah, they actually are reporting it. Uh, down here across this plate boundary, a lot of times what goes on here across the Gulf of, Cali Gulf of California, I didn't mean Mexico, Gulf of California, hopefully I said that right, uh, just off the coast of Mexico here. What takes place here ultimately affects regions upstream here in terms of you know pressure, gradients, and uptick in earthquake activity in general. Uh, and then this earthquake was uh, this morning of 4.9. We'll keep an eye here on the California area. It looks like... Uh, as we speak, another earthquake popped in here to the Bay Region, uh, 1.6 northwest of the uh, Richmond area, it looks like. All right, further out and about, a uh, handful of earthquakes across Utah, up into Montana. Really nothing big going on up here. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here, uh, at least on the USGS map. And as you can see... Uh, let's see here. Really not a whole lot. Those darker colors there on the graphs are big time wind events from yesterday. There's 40, 50 mile per hour winds up there once again, but really not a whole lot of earthquake activity to report here across this area. Uh, defunctionable seismograph stations still exist with choppy intermittent data. This is a station that someone will hopefully get to one of these days and uh, properly tune it. That way we can pick up on any data that's, er, that's uh, relevant to the Yellowstone area. Oklahoma, Texas, still seeing some movement out here across the uh, Maryland area. Looks like they had a small little earthquake late last night, a 1.8 outside of the Columbia area. Nothing big. Uh, and far as Hawaii's earthquake activity goes, let's zoom in real quick and show that. Most of it up here across the Upper East Rift Zone, including a 2.5 here within the last hour. No unusual acti activity. Just uh, we're continuing to see a heightened state of inflation off the coast here of japan got a 5.4 one of the latest quakes here in this area 30 kilometers deep of course over here uh, yesterday a four pointer pretty deep into this area adding strain and stress upstream that's why we're seeing some of the shallower earthquake activity following that deeper movement uh, down here across the tonga area latest one another deep earthquake here 4.8 uh, 548 kilometers deep there into that region. A handful of deeper quakes there in the last couple days. New Zealand still seeing some activity out here, including a 3.9. Looks like that's on the extreme northern edge here of the Hikarangi subduction zone. It's going to be this area right here. A couple other smaller quakes down the uh, plate boundary as well. And off into the Antarctica Pacific region. Five-pointer coming in way down south here, but nothing being reported by the USGS. That's from the EMSC model. So, But there is some earthquake activity ramping up out there. All right. Uh, and, of course, a little bit of swarming going on out in Turkey. I noticed that. I'm sure you guys seen it on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Western areas of Turkey have been seeing a little bit of swarming out there uh, in that region. A 4.7 came into that area I, as well, I believe. Let me double check and see where that 4.7 was. I think it's that one, right? Let's go over here to the EMSC model and double check. Yeah, there's a, a pretty good cluster out here, western Turkey, along with uh, several other smaller quakes there from yesterday. Movement across the Crete area still showing some activity. Uh, really no major swarms out there that I can see around the area, including the uh, volcanic field out here. I, I'm not seeing any earthquake activity showing up here on the map. Over here across uh, this region of the world close to the Spain area 3.8 other 3.9 northern Algeria looks like Iceland's uh, kicking up a little bit up there as well Let's see USGS not picking up on that but it is on the globe a couple three stirring up out there across Iceland so let's go check out the latest data of course a couple days ago they mentioned that the eruption has come to a pause although uh, look at this three-pointer now, oh, this is a ways away from the, the area right now, way up here to the northeast. Not a big earthquake, really no major swarming following that earthquake, but still seeing some, uh, some earthquake activity across various rift zones here of Iceland. Uh, let's check out the live from Iceland site here. Live from Iceland is the site to check out for the uh, webcam imagery. Things calming down now. Looks like they, you know, did a, a good job of adding a secondary boundary barrier here to protect the uh, to protect the road here in the Savartsingi area to the 
uh, left bottom side of the screen here. And, of course, the Blue, Blue Lagoon off in that direction as well. Uh, let's check out this other one, see what we got. A little bit better visual perspective here. Still going to be some hot areas, right? Obviously, there's still going to be some remaining hot lava underneath that area for a little while. But it looks like the eruption has come to an end there in that area. Let's check out the latest information here from the Icelandic Met Office, which was put out yesterday. And the wording is strong. The eruption is over. And the eruption lasted for about 24 days. So the next thing is uh, we're going to have to watch the inflation out here across the Savart Singhi area and whether or not this is going to lead to a new eruption we'll know here soon um, we are starting to go back up here of course there's the eruption uh, back there in uh, late May notice a huge drop in the uh, inflation out there we dropped quite a bit but now we're starting to go back up here but we're not uh, you know, I don't think we're going up as as uh, fast as we had before in the uh, last several eruptions out here across Iceland in the same area. But we'll keep an eye on it. Either way, it's going up. It's not flatlined. It's not going down. So this uh, could be telling us here that we will see another eruption in the near future. Space weather activity here looks like we're flatlining into the uh, sea flare category a little bit of loss of data there but uh, a couple of sea flares maybe a low grade m flare overnight uh, we do have of course numerous active areas let's see what we got for the magnetic complexity out here today um, pretty much discredit any of these sunspots right here this one as well area of interest is probably going to be right around this region right here um that is of course former sunspot original name 3664 now 3723 right yes 3723 yesterday uh it did it did look fairly complex here still a little bit of complexity within this region of you know the main core but it's broad area uh that has the uh, complexity still we do have a chance for uh, seeing some stronger flares here from this area. You know, it's holding on. It's third trip around the sun. And um, we'll see what else it can do here in the days ahead. It will be venturing closer and closer into the Earth-directed view. And there's a couple other sunspots out there as well on the eastern limb we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, the overall threat right now shows 5% chance for X flare. It's dropped a little bit. M flare at 55 C flare around 99% chance or so. Uh, on here it shows 37.23 is growing. So, yeah, we'll just we'll see what happens. No major roars in the forecast for now. Really no uh, major space weather events happening for now. As far as any uh, super close asteroid approaches here over the next five days, let's take a look at that and see what we got. Uh, June 25th today, we got a 61-foot asteroid coming within about a million two hundred twenty thousand miles of us. That's pretty safe. A couple large ones, at least one big large one coming up here. That's a huge asteroid. We want to keep that thing far away from us as possible. That's a little close as well, but four million miles for a 7,000-foot diameter-sized asteroid. That's huge. But, uh, again, that's safely... Uh, passing us there really nothing of any close calls right now as far as something I'd want to open up the uh, the orbital viewer about I'd like to look at this viewer when we get uh, some very close asteroids but uh, for now not worth it those are uh, considerably uh, passing at a safe distance there severe weather outlook uh, we got some site risk category out here 2% for tornado probability there across uh, Nebraska area, it looks like, um, into South Dakota. Wind and the hail threat appears to be the main threats out here today. So just a heads up. Uh, if you look here on the categorical as well, we do have some thunderstorm chances out here across the West Coast. Um, and that is going to be a little bit of fire concern here because we are talking about some dry lightning potentially popping up out here. 
from the monsoonal moisture that is coming up here. Let me show you the weather radar right now. I better go outside, huh? I might have some sprinkles here in a little bit. Um, these are just some light sprinkles, but as the afternoon kicks up, we are going to see the potential for uh, some dry lightning strikes out here. With minimal, very minimal precipitation and lightning strikes, we can spark up some huge fires out here. Looks like the Greenville area, no lightning strikes detected on that yet, but uh, keep an eye on it. With this daytime heating, it could pop these things up a little bit more. Either way, not a bad day. It's a little bit cooler out here today, uh, and it looks like I, I may have some showers, unless it's Virga up there in the atmosphere. Um, I'm going to go out here in a minute and see if I can't get a few showers on my on my face. Um, so, yeah. Got to keep an eye on that. The potential for some uh, lightning strikes out there uh, today could start up, you know, a uh, a new fire or two. Hopefully not, though. Orville got over here a, a pretty decent one that fired up last night. There, um, just outside the Palermo area, this thing's at 673 acres, 15% containment. Uh, quite a few evacuation orders. Level three means that uh, they are orders. That means leave. Unfortunately, I did hear of some uh, structures being burnt out here. Not for sure how that fire started, but uh, it is, uh, you know, getting these weird fires. There was no lightning out here uh, last night, not in that area. Sites fire, I think that's pretty much contained right now. 86% containment. Really no new hot spots out there that I can see. That burned uh, about 19,000 acres up here just outside of me to the southwest. As far as any uh, other... Fires going on here. It does look like we have a few down on the east side of the San Joaquin Valley here outside of Fresno. A couple fires. Uh, i seen they had a lot of lightning strikes out here, so I'm sure uh, some of those may have been caused by some lightning. But right now, no super large ones, and that is good, at least here in California for now. All right, folks, I'm going to head outside, see if I can't get some sprinkles. And... Um, Seismograph stations here look uh, fairly quiet. A little earthquake there in Chile, South America region. Really nothing of uh, major concern, though. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on things, see what happens today. Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on, unless something major happens. Stay safe.